Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog out of Philippians chapter 4. Today we're in verses 1 through 3, which reads, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Iodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. That's Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. In verse 1, Paul refers to the Philippians as his brothers and sisters. You whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown. Paul's relationship with this group had been solidified due to the fact that he had learned the key to all of life, standing firm in the Lord. Paul's ability to unconditionally love others was conditioned by him standing firm in the Lord. In essence, it is the Lord loving the Philippians through Paul. When we love the Lord, we will love people. The words long for are based on Paul's status as a prisoner. His inability to come to them personally has only pulled his heartstrings even more. The word for longed for was found only here in this passage, and it signifies a longing for with great affection. This phrase, stand firm, was used of soldiers who stood their ground in battle. Paul's appeal to joyful unity is embedded in the exhortation to stand firm in the Lord by adopting the pattern modeled by the apostle, that of knowing the Lord Jesus and looking for his return while practicing self-giving love. You see, when we find our identity in the Lord, we are granted a growing measure of security, that feeling of value that enables us to love unconditionally. If we do not find our security in the Lord and we discover it in other things, we will be insecure and therefore immature in our ability to love others unconditionally. In addition, by calling the Philippians his joy, Paul makes a clear statement about the fundamental source of his joy. His joy was founded in seeing God at work in the lives of his friends. Paul also refers to the Philippians as his crown. The Greek word used here, stephanos, does not refer to a royal crown as on a king, but rather the wreath that was placed on the head of those who won a game or a contest. It was a symbol of public honor. The Philippian believers were proof of the work that God had done through Paul in the lives of his friends. In our text, the Apostle Paul speaks to two women, Iodia and Syntyche, who were at odds with one another. Ironically, Iodia means sweet fragrance, and Syntyche means pleasant. They were anything but. And they were, ex they were experiencing a major conflict. And everyone knew about their difference. People had likely taken sides. The conflict between these two women was a threat to the gospel and their unity. Paul pleads with these two women to be of the same mind in the Lord. He addresses the arena of our sanctification, our souls, which are made up of our minds, our wills, and our emotions. Our souls and our spirits aren't the same. In fact, the only part of us that is born again is our spirit. But our souls explain why we still struggle with such things as doubt and sin. Having the same mind doesn't have so much to do with 
the content that we believe. It has more to do with our attitude. We are to consider others first before we consider ourselves. The humility of Christ is the ultimate example of how we are to think. Paul isn't suggesting these two women come to the same conclusion. He is, he is pleading with them to relate to each other in the midst of their difference, kind of like my dog is right now with her cousin. To be of the same mind in the Lord is not arriving at the same conclusion. It's about treating each other like Christ has treated us. This is God's pathway toward joyful unity. In our text, the apostle provides us with a novel approach to conflict resolution. And here it is. Think the gospel. Let the gospel inform the way you treat others, especially those with whom you're at odds. You see, in the gospel, we have something that's bigger and more important than any of our conflicts. And it screams, no one deserves God, God's favor. Yet he extended it to us while we were yet his enemies. Now, whereas the potential joy stealer in Philippians 1 is our prisons, and in Philippians 2 is the people in our lives, and in chapter 3 it's our pedigree and or our possessions, in Philippians 4, the joy stealer is our problems. Our problems created in us a certain measure of anxiety. I said that wrong. Our problems create in us a certain measure of anxiety. And that's the main expression of it in today's world. A real issue in our text is resisting bitterness, which is destructive because it is an appetite of the flesh. In order to experience together the life the Lord Jesus died to provide us, we must daily choose his definitions of all things. The love of Christ has been applied to us and we should yield to its flow in our lives and through our lives. And we don't have to manufacture it because it's his. You'll remember that in every chapter, Paul accentuates something unique about the Lord Jesus. When we put together these uniquenesses, we get his definition of joy. In Philippians 1, it is the life of Christ. In Philippians 2, it is Christ's way of thinking and living. In Philippians 3, it is that Christ is our pursuit, our goal. And here in Philippians 4, it is Christ, our contentment, our satisfaction. So the stage is set with an unnamed conflict between two prominent women in the church at Philippi. Now, everybody's got problems. Job said man is born for trouble. The question is not who's got problems. The real question is, how do I get victory over my problems? And we all have to admit, our greatest problems are the conflicts we have with people that we care about. This is the subject of Philippians 4. The phrase, in the Lord, is used 132 times in Paul's letters. When we view ourselves as favored by God through his Son, we will be more likely to yield to his presence in our lives. Then we will be more likely to have the mind of Christ control in ours. Then we will increasingly pursue the Lord more, finding our satisfaction in him as our goal. It is out of this disposition that we are able to love others as he has loved us. My friends, I trust this podcast is helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day. Mm -hmm.